Welcome fellow doggers, friends, and fans to another edition of Off the Hook here on Big Dog Music Radio. Produced and directed by Lisa Day. Each week we like to get together and spin some fabulous tunes by the very talented artists at BigDogMusicMafia.com and get to know one of our fantastic culture warriors who will be joining us in about 15 minutes. If you'd like to be a part of tonight's show, you can call us at 347-838-8898 or you can hit the little Skype button at the top of our player at our blog talk radio station, Big Dog Music Radio. So we hope that you're at home, relaxed, with your boots kicked off, sitting in your favorite chair, with your favorite person, and your favorite beverage, and we hope that you'll enjoy the show. I'm your host, Lisa May. Wait, well, um, I was hearing double, and I need y'all to tell me in the chat room if you were also hearing the music double. I'm not sure what was going on. You know, we just ran a test about, oh, 45 minutes ago, and it worked perfectly. <laughs> so, let's see. All right, no double. I am being told awesome. All right, well, welcome to Off the Hook, our Saturday night show. I guess I should uh, go ahead and turn on the camera and here i am so anyways welcome to the show we have uh garrett lloyd king joining us tonight at about 10 15 and he is a patriotic singer songwriter we're looking forward to chatting with him all about his fantastic music uh he's got a, some great parodies and also some very heartwarming um songs tributes to our troops that we're going to be talking about uh, in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and I'm um, trying to figure out why y'all are seeing... Okay, we're going to switch cameras. All right, now I'm not so dark. Um, let's see. So, uh, first of all, I want to give a big shout out to our friends at FTR Radio and Traditional American Movement. And uh, if you're listening to us over at Blog Talk Radio, uh, hopefully everything is uh, sounding good to you there as well. Uh this is, as I said, we've been having, this is our fourth week with this show, and uh, each week we seem to be presented with just a little bit different challenge. Last week we actually were unable to get Blog Talk Radio up and running, and uh, tonight it appears to be working. So keeping our fingers crossed. And uh, if you are listening to us over at BigDogMusicRadio.com, you can actually slide on over to the chat room, uh, Big Dog TV. Go look for the tab, Big Dog TV at the top and then drop down to the Big Dog, Big Dog TV chat. Now, you can't chat with us unless you are a member of BigDogMusicMafia.com, so I want to remind you of that little detail. And before we uh, get too much uh, further into uh, uh, the show, we're going to go ahead and kick it off with a song by Mr. Joe Merrick. Uh, tonight we're going to, as you can see, we are broadcasting in our Christmas studio tonight. And uh, to get us all in the Christmas spirit, we're going to go ahead and play a song by Mr. Joe Merrick called Santa is Alive and Well. My kids are just old enough to understand about the North Pole and the white bearded man. And the miracle that plays out on Christmas Eve They know about reindeer that fly Around the whole world in just one night And the presents that get left under the tree As I recite the night before Christmas While I'm tucking the ham in I start to reminisce and feel the magic once again I saw him through my children's eyes Santa is alive and well While they 
Morning is coming round real soon. Pajama feet will race into the living room. And I get to relive a long lost memory. As all of the presents unwrap, I believe old St. Nicholas is finally back. And that's the greatest gift those kids can give to me. Oh, I saw them through my children's eyes. Santa is alive and well. While they spy for the sleds speed across the sky, and they listen for the sleigh bell. Of the stockings tight, I'm sure as I can breathe. Santa is alive and well, as my children believe. I'm sure as I can breathe. Santa is alive and well, 'cause my children believe. Santa is alive and well this Christmas Eve. And that was Mr. Joe Merrick with Santa is Alive and Well. You know, the funny thing is, is I had to uh, have a talk with my son, who is 10 years old. He and his 10-year-old buddy were decorating the Christmas tree at their karate school, Power Kicks. And apparently, they were telling the 5-year-olds that there's no such thing as Santa. I'm not sure if I told the story last week or not, but uh, we had to have a good talk with him because, you know, I wanted him to realize that, uh, um, first of all, if he doesn't believe in Santa, then it looks like he's not going to get anything for Christmas. <laughs> and I told him that I actually saw Santa. So he says, well, what's with all the different Santas at the malls? I said, they're just his helpers. But anyways, um, we all know the real meaning of Christmas, and of course, that is the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And speaking of birthdays, we want to give a big shout out to our uh, birthdays this weekend. We have Ms. Bailey Connell celebrating her birthday today, as well as George Bannon, who I do believe is Steve Bannon's brother. Steve is the number two man over at Breitbart, as well as the uh, film director and uh, radio host over at Victory uh, Sessions and Breitbart News on Sirius Radio. And also, happy birthday to Kent Darty. And on Sunday, we have Bob, Bob Putnam, Ms. Bonnie Betts, who is a local Fredericksburg, um, actually Stafford Tea Party leader, David Tripoli, Elso Tan. Elso is the one who is uh, uh, the e-rewards that we have um, with the uh, points that Ms. Jeannie Hink seems to have managed to hold on to all 12 months. Well, December's not over yet, so uh, Tom seems to be catching up awful close to her. So, Tom, you know, we'd like to see you win one this time. So 
Um, you're not that far behind Ms. Jeannie, but she has held the title of Keyboard Warrior of the Month for 11 consecutive months since we started the program. And anyways, Mr. Elso Tan is the person who developed that program. Also, Kamir Chai, Robert Campbell Sr., and Ron Beatty. And real quickly, our show lineup, we have uh, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern, Salt and Light from the Right, hosted by me, 30 minutes of uplifting music and uh, some inspirational messages based on scripture. So always a good shot in the arm to help uh, lift our spirits and uh, prepare us for the challenges in the coming week. And then at 9.30 a.m., same day, tomorrow, same channel, we have Mr. Trey Martin and Jimmy J. with their wacky Today and News Sunday morning funhouse show at 9.30 Eastern. And then Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. It's Tuesday night, but the show is called Wednesday at midnight, which is Wednesday morning at midnight. We have the more serious side of Mr. Trey Martin. And last uh, week, he actually had Ms. Anna Little, mayor, former mayor of New Jersey, one of the towns in New Jersey, Anna Little, who happens to be a close friend of Mr. Bobby Powers, uh, a fellow big dogger. She was a, a delightful guest on the show. So if you missed that show, definitely want to check it out. Some great uh, conversation about Jersey politics. And then, of course, next Saturday, right here, same uh, big dog channel and uh, same station. We have Off the Hook at 10 p.m. Eastern and our guest our spotlight artist will be Mr. Michael Marino from Chloe's Open Socket. So we are looking forward to chatting with uh, Michael. He, they apparently have some new songs that they're going to debut on our show. So we're looking forward to that. Now, real quick, uh, we've got a few minutes before uh, Mr. Garrett Lloyd King joins us. Um, you know, we always talk about uh, some sort of a cool story of the week. And I thought it was very cool that uh, Mr. Trade Martin has written a very unique kind of Christmas song called Benghazi Christmas Song. He is so determined that that uh, we hold, of course we all are determined, that we hold our elected, elected representatives accountable for pursuing the truth behind what really happened that fateful night uh, in, in Benghazi when we lost uh, four Americans including uh, Ambassador Christopher Stevens. Well, he and uh, Ms. Tony, his girlfriend, uh, put together a video for the Benghazi Christmas song, and they released it just a week ago. And they already have over 4,000 hits on YouTube. So clearly they have a fantastic song, and it's called They'd Be Home, Benghazi Christmas song, and in parentheses it says they'd be home for Christmas if it weren't for the gross negligence of uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who uh, everybody is... Uh, assuming is going to run uh, in 2016. In fact, uh, on one of the Today and News Sunday Morning Funhouse shows, uh, Ms. Uh, Clinton apparently sent flowers to somebody up in Massachusetts, and it just so happened that Mr. Jimmy J., one of our delightful radio hosts, uh, was a friend of his, called him up and asked him. He was, he was swamped. He owns a flower shop. He, and, and apparently a very popular flower shop with uh, the, the hoity-toity of, of that particular area. And he asked Jimmy to deliver some flowers, and wouldn't you know it, the note was handwritten from Ms. Hillary Clinton, and it said, I hope I can count on you in 2016. If that is not evidence that she has every intention of running, I don't know what is. And so, anyways, that I thought was a cool story. And, and on the video, if you go to YouTube, uh, Trade says that he was inspired to write the song as a sincere dedication to our men who were left unprotected during the tragic siege in Benghazi and not sent one ounce of support to fend off the attacking terrorists. I honestly feel terrible for our brave men and their families. May they rest in peace while hopefully we bring their murderers to justice and have them punished to the full extent of the law. God bless America and all our courageous men and women who protect our citizens and old glory. And we're just going to play just a real quick promo, and uh, we're going to be welcoming onto the show Mr. Garrett Lloyd King. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Tom Balistrieri, and you are listening to Big Dog Music Radio. Enemy of the state is in the building. EOTS, high caliber, sacrifice, and Gina taking hip hop to a whole new level, man. Check it out. 
What's up, everybody? This is High Caliber, a.k.a. Mr. Conservative. Big shout-out to everybody at Big Dog. You can check out my music at iTunes or Amazon.com, High Caliber Enemy of the State, or follow me on Twitter at High Caliber 75. Peace. All right. Well, tonight we are indeed thrilled to be welcoming to the show Patriot singer-songwriter Mr. Garrett Lloyd King, whose first love is putting into words how people feel. He's tasted the cool breeze that blows through Music City, and you will find Garrett's lyrics are catchy and comical, yet passionate, heartfelt melodies. They can only command a heartfelt emotional response. Garrett was born in Central Washington and currently resides in Western Washington with periodic trips to Nashville, Music City, to record and network. He's worked with local area bands and recording artists and wears many hats, producer, singer, songwriter, and engineer. And as his press kit says, impacting the generations at the speed of sound. Welcome to Off the Hook, Mr. Garrett Lloyd King. Great to be here, and I'm humbled to be here. I just, first of all, want to thank all our veterans uh, on this uh, day of remembrance for December 7th on the day of infamy. And uh, our first day of infamy, not to mention our second day of infamy, which is 9 11. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Well, we are really, really glad to have you here, and I'm, I'm trying to turn up your volume just a little bit um, so that the folks can hear you. They're saying that your sound is not the greatest, so we're going to try to amp you up a little bit more. I'm on a speakerphone. Do you want me to go back to... Uh, yeah, that might be uh, better because the, the folks in the chat room said that they're uh, having a hard time hearing you. Okay, let me go to that. Okay. If I can... Uh, maybe I'll just turn the, uh, hold on. If I lose you, I'll call you right back. Again. Okay. So while uh, Mr. King is... How's that? How's that? Is much, much better. Is that Thank better? Yes, much better. Okay, cool. Yeah, Excellent. Cool. Okay. Right. I'm ready. All right. Uh, all right. So the folks in the chat room, they, they were saying that they can't hear you. Hopefully they can hear you a little bit better now. I'm going to slide the mic a little closer to the speaker here, so hopefully can pick you up even more. Um, so, anyways, let's go ahead and talk about where your music journey began. I believe you said in your bio that it started at the age of 11. Tell us about that. Well, just as a kid, um, uh, we we had to choose at, from our music choices. Uh, growing up with um, siblings that were um, anywhere from you know eight to ten years older than myself, uh, we had the top 40 uh, from the 70s, and then. My mom and dad liked country music, so uh, we grew up in an area where the radio station went off the air at like 4.30, 5.30, uh, or at sundown, and so we got to listen, we had to listen to country music during the day, but at nighttime, the only station that came thing was a, uh, was an AOR, AOR station that uh, played, uh, you know, your contemporary uh, rock pop hits uh, during the 70s, so a lot of classic uh, adult, adult uh, oriented music, and then they drew in some of the, the good classic pop rock in with their their mix. And so they called it, when I went to do radio, they ended up calling it, they called it AOR, but it meant all over the road. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was kind of funny. So so I know I know a lot of the songs that a lot of kids really didn't listen to a lot just because of my older brothers and sisters. Ah, excellent. Well, um, so... When did you teach yourself how to play the guitar, or did you take lessons? I took a few, but pretty much uh, self-taught. Um, I had a guitar since I was seven, eight years old, but um, but no one uh, really uh, was there to teach me. Plus, it was never in tune, and so I kind of kind of messed around with it a few times and accidentally played a few th few songs, but really didn't get the uh, the knack of it till kind of the teenage years. Until I heard, kind of got into heavy metal first with Metal Health uh, from Quiet Riot and uh, some of the, the Judas Priest and the early 80s rock and uh, kind of got excited then and then uh, ended up uh, kind of picking it up, bought my first brand new guitar, uh, mail order from California, it was a Carbon V220, <laughs> so, so it reflected my heavy rock uh, influence at the time, but I ended up going back home to my uh, my country roots and uh, 
you know, and then uh, obviously the patriotic side of music um, is real powerful in the country genre, and so uh, that was a big influence from there. Um, I I wish I would have had that teacher. I just don't know with my lyric ability. I, I consider myself, you know, a top-notch lyricist versus a musician. I'm okay as a guitar player, but overall I, I, I do think my strengths are in the lyrics and being able to even go listen to a song that's written kind of half-heartedly and to say, hey, this could be better, this could be better. And, I, you know, I do, have a, I do have a knack for the English language, and it always bothers me when people uh, run on uh, enunciations like want to or want you, and it sounds like want you, not you. <laughs> right, right, right. It's kind of comical. Well, now you mentioned uh, getting into uh, patriotic and uh, patriotic kind of music. Why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about your parody uh, writing and, uh, in particular, your song, Money for Nothing, because we want to go ahead and play that. Uh, so why don't you introduce okay. that song, and, and uh, because you, you, you're, you used your gift of writing and uh, took a uh, popular song and uh, made it a political message. Well, one of the things that really bothers me is uh, entitlement mentality. My mother was on uh, assistance back when they had food stamps. You know, it was kind of embarrassing to go in, and you know, but you could only really buy the necessities. I was in a in a convenience store, and some punk got, gets up there and goes, "Yo, I'll take EBT," and he has like a arm load of rock stars and some other junk, and it was like, dude, you know, EBT is not for uh, not for rock star drinks and candy bars and you know, sippy cups and all that junk. It's for, you know, meat, bread, eggs, and milk, basically. That's how we did it, and, you know, hopefully some toilet paper. But I just, you know, the, the um, just the absurdity of this entitlement mentality. Now, they're going to accuse us as conservatives as not being for helping the poor. No, help the poor, but if, if, if you guys have the ability, get your rears out there and get to work because, um, you know, there's no, I learned from a, a great football coach, uh, Jack Collins at my high school in Eastern Washington, and he always said there's no free lunch, which I took, a, you, you, you know, to, if you're going to get anything out of life, you got to work for it. Exactly. And so, when I wrote, when I, I got the, uh, I got the line for, uh, money for nothing, you know, money for nothing, I want my EVT, and then, uh, and then I just kind of worked it, and, uh, I kind of, I was joking around when I was working on it, but it came so easy. And then when I decided to take the karaoke track and throw it together, um, I sent it to my buddy, and he, he sent me, he called me right back, and he usually doesn't call right back, and he said, tell me you wrote that. He goes, please, tell me you wrote, wrote that, because he goes, if you did, that is bold. And so um, so this is money for nothing, um, welfare checks for free, <laughs> and... Uh, all right. You know, I, and I love the response when we first posted it. So uh, let it roll. All right. Here we go. Money for Nothing. I Want My EBT by Mr. Garrett Lloyd King. Because 
back up uh, yeah okay it looks like I've got the video feed back up but of course I've lost my entire playlist for the the show which is really not cool <laughs> oh goodness there's always something I tell you what you know we were it, it, we're at the half hour point and we usually take a break right now so uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, why don't you go ahead and tell us some um, while I'm trying to reload your, your songs, tell us about your your experience as a DJ, uh, Mr. Lloyd King. Okay. Well, um, I had moved to Alaska uh, in the mid-'80s out of school and um, got this idea for a, uh, a food product. And so my mom and I opened a bakery in Soldotna, Alaska, and we're only open a short period, uh, obviously young and not knowing how the business failed to or failed to plan a few things, but part of our problem was we had an advertising bill with the radio station. Well, on career days in, in school, I remember of all the years we had career days, I always went to the radio DJ career day uh, segment, and we had local DJs from the area come in and talk, and always sound like an impossible job. And uh, to get experience, and they say, yeah, you can go to college, but that don't guarantee you get a job. Well, I ended up uh, having a, uh, a about a fifteen or eighteen hundred dollar advertising bill with the local radio station, <clears throat> and so we closed the bakery. And uh, one of our DJs came into the bar that we worked at, and she said, "Hey, they're hiring down at the 
radio station, and I asked her, what are they hiring for? She goes, oh, DJs. I go, really? She's like, I always want to do that. I don't want to, I don't want to say they'd hire me. She goes, do you have any experience? And I go, no. And so I ended up calling them down there, and they, I went down and did an air check, and like, usually it's, it's kind of cruddy. I ended up uh, hearing that some other guy got fired, so I called, and I go, hey, I'll come down for free for a couple, you know, days and just try it, and if you don't like me, you don't have to hire me. Uh-huh. And so I went, to, I went down there and hung out and kind of saw how it worked and ended up doing it for a couple of days. And uh, the guy ended up saying, well, you're not bad. You know, you're just, you've gotten better in the two or three days you've done it. So if you're getting better at that rate, heck, in a, in a couple of weeks, you should be fairly, fairly decent. So um, I ended up getting into it and I, I did it for about six months. And um, then I had an opportunity to come, come back to Washington from Alaska uh, pretty much free of charge. Some friends were moving out to go get some medical, uh, sp- uh, special medical attention on some neuro- neurological issues. And so they had a vehicle that they needed help driving down. So I drove that down and came back to Washington State kind of basically for free. But the guy told me when I left that, hey, we're going to think about moving you into a full-time six to midnight weeknight. And so, uh, you know, kind of bummed out on that. But I was always intimidated by the Seattle market, which is actually a pretty strong radio market. And uh, I just never got back into it, but uh, ended up getting into the music retail business. And that kind of carried me through my path of uh, getting connected in with uh, uh, Nashville writers. And a friend of mine ended up uh, getting a strong record deal uh, back in the 90s. And... I got my first taste of uh, going to Nashville and kind of meeting people and kind of seeing what it was like. It's a different culture, that's for sure. No doubt. No doubt. Now, um, just so I, I want to go ahead and switch gears re- real quick. You mentioned Alaska, uh, and uh, there's a particular uh, politician that came from Alaska that we all know and love. Uh, why don't you tell us about uh, yes. a song that you wrote called Going Rogue? Um, well, there was, uh, this one person who came out with a book. I never heard of her when I was up there. I might have seen her on CD a few times because she did, uh, work at one of the, uh, did commentary or work for one of the CD stations for a period of time. So I may vaguely, uh, if I really thought back, I remember seeing a pretty brunette on the CD several times. <clears throat> um, the, uh, the one thing in our election, uh, process, um, I heard about this woman in February of 08. Um, uh, that was before my mom passed away. And uh, I told her, I go, Mom, I guess there's this uh, the former governor or the governor of Alaska um, is, um, I guess, might be an, an interesting candidate for uh, coming up in public office. And she goes, oh, Sarah, oh, she's a wonderful lady. She's a believer. And, oh, oh, I just love her and blah, blah, blah. And so anyway, so what happened when they announced her um, – you know, the people say that she waited down the McCain ticket. Mm-hmm. She lifted it up because people got excited because Sarah does not need a translator. She speaks English. She speaks um, uh, We the People. And she connected with so many people. I did a bumper sticker that said, Don't blame me. I, va- I voted for Sarah. <laughs> and sold, uh, you know, 500, 1,000 of them. I think we even sold some back in Virginia when we were back there. But um, I have, I've only had five people in front of all the tea party events and in front of all the gun shows that I've done ever ask for a don't blame me I voted for a McCain sticker only five people that tells you how much impact Sarah had with the base and the the heart of America amen so when she come out with when she come out with her book um, going rogue um, it was uh, it wasn't actually really even 100% finished back when we did the uh, tea party patriots uh, tea party event back in uh, Richmond uh, back in 2010. Mm-hmm. It was almost done, but um, I had just sent the music. I got the music done. I just have faith that God's going to give me the words if I miss in uh, one or two lines. You know, if it's more than a few lines, then, you know, um, you know, I may hold back, but usually I'll kind of go for it. And so anyway, uh, on the way back from uh, Richmond that year, uh, we stopped off and I did the main, uh, I caught a cold down there for some dumb reason. Did the main vocals uh, for the background singers to come back in, and uh, went home. I cured. I I got healed up and stuff. But yeah, I ended up writing a song called "Going Rogue," and uh, I think 
our friend Kalen Smith uh, is on uh, listening. He did a little video from, uh, he came from either Connecticut or New Hampshire to do Indianola in, uh, in Iowa there. I was invited down there by that group, uh, the founder of that group that brought Sarah in that weekend. But uh, my segment got rained out. I was supposed to sing about three songs Aww. right before they introduced Sarah and the big thunderstorm came back, come rolling through. And I looked at the clouds and I said, okay, God, I'm listening. And uh, I didn't get to sing, but I got to serve, uh, help out those guys. And um, you know, I haven't fully come back around yet, but, you know, you do everything for the right reason. God's going to bless you and uh, give you a stage to to uh, perform when it's, uh, when it's in his timing. And, and if you just treat it right with the right heart, uh, nothing that we do for freedom is in vain. Amen. Very, very well said. We're going to go ahead and play Going Rogue and keep our fingers crossed that when the song ends that we don't lose you again. <laughs> All right. And it is available on CD Baby for a shameless plug also. Oh, no, no shame at all. In fact, that's why you're here, to tell people about Amen. where they can buy your music. Now, they can go to Garrett, uh, oh gosh, GarrettLloydKing.com. Yeah, that'll link over to CD Baby. I've been kind of hesitant on, I've been trying to get stuff finished, but um, only a couple songs are actually available for download. If, if someone really wants something, they can get in contact with me through there, and I'll make arrangements, uh, you know, through a PayPal or that sort of thing to get them the MP3s or whatever if they really want to buy everything. But we got two songs on CD Baby. Uh, go, uh, the One of the songs we're going to listen to is just got posted up to uh, iTunes uh, this month. So okay. um, we're going to start to start getting stuff made, available as demand starts going, hopefully. Excellent. Well, let's go ahead and play Going Rogue.
posterity. America, just be bold by going rogue. Going Rogue by Garrett Lloyd King. And we're going to take just a real brief uh, station identification break. And when we come back, Garrett, we wanna, I want to talk to you about your mini EP, uh, Boots in Heaven. Okay. You bet. Can do. Let's get her done. Hang on. Hang on. Dig in. Because this here fight. It's only begun, you see the tough get going when the going gets tough and there's just nowhere to run. You got my back, buddy, I got yours. Let's get her done. We'll put her back on track, buddy, that's a fact. Let's get her done. Hey America, this is Brad Unick, and you're listening to Big Dog Music Radio. That's Big Dog. D-A-W-G Cause we're just that cool Alright, so um, uh, Gosh, the time flies when we're having a great time uh, Why don't you tell <laughs> Now I read in your, in your EP uh, Or in your um, bio uh, that you were going to work on an um, album called The Best of Garrett Lloyd King when a change in plans uh, had you completing a mini EP, Boots in Heaven. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I had started uh, pre-production. You know, as songwriters, you know, hopefully we work hard. We try to get the sound. Other times we leave it up to a studio. But um, I had a couple songs uh, ready to, to, to roll in pre-production for to start the, the process, and uh, we have a, down here, out here, we actually have in Seattle, if people don't know it, we have probably the first um, full conservative uh, radio station, which was originally one of the first stations to carry Rush Limbaugh, which I'm enjoying raspberry, uh, two of my tea right now, keeping my throat warm and lubricated, <laughs> and uh, yeah, K 570 KDI was one of the first full-time radio stations. Michael Medved was originally with them, and uh, um, but we had Rush Limbaugh and uh, the great Kirby Wilbur. Uh, folks that listen to Sean Hannity have heard Kirby Wilbur, uh, which he'll also be sitting in for Sean, I believe, uh, on the 27th or 28th. So uh, just a great, uh, great patriot conservative, uh, real strong Reagan conservative. And um, he was talking about a gentleman named Josh Starling, who uh, was in the process, I think uh, he may have ended up losing <clears throat> the legs that they were trying to save, but uh, ended up speaking with him uh, during the holidays back in uh, 2000, what was it, 2005 or six, somewhere in there. <clears throat> and uh, he ended up talking about a movie called uh, The Bridges um, at Toko Ri, which is an old uh, 50s Korean War movie. It had uh, Frederick March, uh, William Holden, Grace Kelly, Mickey Rooney, and um, William Holden played the pilot, and uh, Frederick March played the uh, the admiral or the general or admiral that was on the uh, on the aircraft carrier. And he said a line at the end of the movie, and he said, "Where do we get such men?" Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, Kirby uh, just made those words come alive when we, he spoke of our, our, our heroes uh, that are actually almost half our age. <laughs> yeah. It uh, was, was just really amazing. And so I went and bought the movie on DVD and took it home and watched it and four or five times, actually. And I, uh, I came up with a line, where does America find such men? And so ended up writing the first song uh, for that uh, patriotic project called Boots in Heaven and didn't really call it Boots in Heaven at first. Mm-hmm. Uh, from there, I was at, uh, I did a, uh, a, ha- a fall uh, uh, support the troops uh, luncheon and I got to sing Where Does America Find Such Men for the first time uh, at uh, this luncheon and the, uh, the organizer came up and asked if there was a, something special that we could do because one of the ladies that managed one of the little boutiques uh, lost her husband in Iraq the month before. Mm. And I just, my heart just co- it almost collapsed right there. I just, I just thought in my mind, I just got the words, boots on the ground are now boots in heaven. Oh, wow. And, mm. um, and I went home and I, I wrote the chorus immediately almost. And, um, I bawled for just hours writing that, singing it, just praying for uh, those uh, those gold star uh, wives and mothers and fathers out there. And so that song wrote, and then uh, there was another song that uh, we ended up, we all wrote all these in less than a year. Mm-hmm. And there's another song called uh, Moment of Thunder, mm-hmm. which I think Candy did, Candy did on an earlier show uh, a year or two back. Right. Uh, called, a, called A Moment of Thunder. And that was kind of a, kind of a theme song for a, a, a Harley rally or a bike rally that they were going to rev their engines for one minute. Very so cool. I wrote the song building up to, you know, a moment of thunder, and it was all about that one minute or two minutes of uh, that revving, just that honor, that roar. Um, you know, just, you know, if you could ever roar a, a, a word of gratitude, you know, a Harley is the word. Amen. Roar, blah, 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 you know. Amen. You know, what a great... What a great sound! And so that that kind of came about, and it was uh, I'm a I'm a painter by trade, so uh, so for, so it happened that year. I ended up producing not only my project, but I ended up producing executive producing kind of a kind of a Northwest '80s heavy metal sounding uh, rock band, which that really didn't go anywhere, but uh, it was a great experience. And uh, but we ended up coming up with uh, Boosts in Heaven. Um, as the title, and uh, we've uh, sold probably five or six hundred of them over the years I've done that, but the most powerful part about Boots in Heaven is that my mom passed away in 08, Mm. and um, God used the Boots in Heaven music for a beautiful uh, healing for me, myself, uh, as I put together the slideshow and picture show, show and I just cried and cried and cried, and, and I got purged my, my brokenness with that song because it was written in compassion for those who had lost um, a, a loved one. And, Amen. Uh, nothing, more, no, nothing more powerful. And you were there, Lisa, in Richmond, and yes. the standing ovation um, for this song, yeah, well, if we're going to play it now, yes. was the, the standing ovation was amazing. Uh, I had to cut a song out of that, plus I shortened uh, the Global Warming song to help um, move that production along. Mm-hmm. But I was so I was so honored to get the prime spot because I had been willing to sacrifice my, my position. And uh, and Norville kept coming up and saying, "Hey, you said you're flexible," and kept moving me around. And little did I know that I would end up in probably the prime location to perform for that event. And I'm, I was just so humbled. And I think the, the the cherry on the on the on the Sunday was to come out of there and to go up to Debbie Lee and to see her <laughs> and just wiping the tears from her eyes. And I asked her if she had seen it, and she said, "I was up there up front the whole time, crying the whole time, and I'm a, I have to go fix my mascara now." <laughs> well, <laughs> but, uh, I I but, hate to cut you off. We've got six minutes left in the show, and I and I want to hit play both this song and your global warming song so uh, as quickly as possible if you could introduce global warming song and then uh, we're going to thank you for taking the time to spend with us uh, the the time went by awfully fast um and uh so real quick inter- introduce the global warming song and then we'll go ahead and play both songs 
Okay, well, this is uh, the Global Warming song. Um, it's available on iTunes. Uh, it's a funny parody, uh, an original parody on uh, what I think the real cause of global warming is. And then Boots in Heaven uh, to all our fallen heroes, uh, and then especially for their families. Yes. Boots in Heaven is for the families for the most part. Um, my heart goes out to every veteran from here to uh, the founding. <laughs> you know, they fought and died and gave their blood for our freedom, just like our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's been a real treat chatting with you. Uh, it's been way too long since the last time I saw you, and hopefully we'll get to uh, see you again at uh, some event in the near future. So uh, thank thank you so much from all of us at Big Dog Music Radio and Big Dog Music Mafia. Keep the, uh, the fantastic music coming, and we're going to go ahead and play um, the uh, Boots in Heaven and the Global Warming song. All right? Take care. Thanks, Lisa. All right, bye-bye. You bet. God bless.
credit and I'm gonna need it fast Seems I'm exhaling too much greenhouse gas If you see my baby, ooh, you know what I mean I knew she was a haughty at the moment I fell When she looks at me, Lord, my glaciers melt My hybrid polar bear and I'm a drowning in my dream Side. Oh, my lady loves to monkey tonk every night. My model shows a new front for me. Hot country loving in store by the morning. My baby's so hot. She calls global warning. That's right, the convenient truth. Deal or no deal. You know what I'm talking about. Daisy Dukes, Lordy, every head turns While deep in my heart, them wildfires burn Them Santa Ana winds are fan in my flames of desire But just like a hurricane coming ashore No one really knows what she has in store For oceans are rising and drowning in a sea of love Feel my temperature on the rise My baby turns me on Way down deep inside This carbon blueprint is one heck of a sign Oh, my lady loves her honky-tonk every night It's never dull And it's never boring So I ain't buying old Al Gore's story My baby's so hot She calls global warming You betcha Sage and a nice cold shower My baby turns me on Each and every hour There ain't no consensus if we all agree Oh, you know my lady is as hot as can be And this is where you can tell your own story How your darling's hot And she's so adoring And your lady's so hot That's why my baby's so hot to all the ladies that are hot, you cause global warming. My baby's smoking hot, and she cause global warming. Oh yeah! Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Hockey and the soccer moms looking like the atom bomb. Drive a killer meter maid looking hotter every day. Cheerleader, dancer, model, get out here and join the party. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Temperature goes up, and some clothes come on. I love summer. I think I'll give me some sweet tea. And that's going to do it for tonight's edition of Off the Hook here on Big Dog Music Radio. We hope that you've enjoyed the show and look forward to having you join us again next Saturday night, same time, same station, where we'll be chatting with yet another fabulous culture warrior and spinning some more fantastic music by the very talented artists at BigDogMusicMafia.com. If you don't have any plans, we'd love to have you stick around for our second hour Afterburner, our live listener request show, where you get to pick the songs that we play. Just give us a call at 347-838-8898. And if we have the song, we'll be happy to play it. So until next week, keep your chin up, keep the faith, and keep up the good fight. I'm your host, Lisa May. Good night, Breitbart, wherever you are. <laughs>